Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi and foreign ministers from 53 African countries met in Beijing on Sunday for the seventh ministerial conference of the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation. CGT and Huna talked to some of the ministers on their expectations for the summit. Foreign Minister Wang Yi co-chaired the meeting with his South African counterparts. He said since the 2015 Johannesburg summit, substantial agreements have been made in trade and finance, green development and people-to-people -people exchanges. Burundi's foreign minister talked about the relationship between China and African countries. Uh, China is implementing uh, the politics of uh, mutual friendship between China and African countries and that this friendship is based on a win-win relationship. So that's why you see uh, the whole, all the countries from Africa have come because we have that mutual respect between China and all African countries. Wang Yi also stressed that the minister's meeting will pave the way for the leaders' summit. Ministers from African countries said they have high expectations for it. Very high, very high expectations because this is a, a new platform that is shaking the world. Uh, this uh, relation between China and Africa is uh, really unique. And we expect that uh, from Beijing we will go back with uh, not only with projects but with the new ideas. Wan said both China and African countries are committed to working together under China proposed Belt and Road Initiative. The initiative can help Africa achieve the goals of the African Union's Agenda 2063 and the UN's 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. International organizations at the meeting hailed China's proposal. We have 19 members in Africa where there is natural bamboo. So for us, this discussion between China and Africa is incredibly important. Great opportunities to work with Chinese technology, with Chinese knowledge in Africa to develop these fantastic natural resources. The Beijing Declaration and the Beijing Action Plan 2019 to 2021 were both passed at the meeting. The two documents will be put to vote at the Leaders' Summit. Hona CGTN, Beijing. To get more insight on China-Africa cooperation, we are joined by Yang Xin Sang. He is the director of the African Communication Research Center at the Communication University of China. Thank you for joining us on Africa Live. First off, what are your expectations from the FOCAC Summit, though, in Beijing? Yes, you know, I feel very excited about the coming summit and uh, as a professor of uh, communication University of China, I do have a lot of, uh, you know, expectations. And first of all, I think I really expect that uh, the cooperation could be upgraded in the education sector, especially in the higher education. And I do hope that there will be more collaborations at, uh, you know, higher education in terms of uh, uh, education, co-research project, uh, joint, you know, degree programs. And I believe uh, setting up more uh, think tanks will be more helpful to uh, strengthen the uh, mutual understandings. Uh, and what are some of the key achievements, if you can just lay that down for us, some of the key achievements of the China-Africa cooperation so far? Okay. Uh, you know, in the past 18 years, there are so many achievements uh, took place under the framework of uh, FOCAC. And uh, I would like to stress two of them. Uh, one is in the field of, uh, you know, people-to-people -people communication, and the other is in media cooperation. As to people-to-people, -people, you know, exchanges and communication, there are a lot took place, such as, you know, in recent years, we see increasing number of uh, African students studying in China uh, for Chinese language and also for degree programs. This is a good opportunity for Chinese to learn from them and to know each other. At the um, level of uh, media cooperation, I really appreciate what has uh, taken place between us. For example, in Beijing, there is a center uh, which is uh, 
uh, China Africa Press Center, uh, which uh, a group of uh, African journalists came to this center every year and to report China's story to the world. And the same, you know, we see there's increasing presence of Chinese international media like CGTN, like New Xinhua News Agency, China Daily, uh, Beijing Review, and the CRI. Uh, you know, they are trying very hard to tell African stories to the world. So I believe those efforts should be taken seriously as, um, you know, the effort from both sides, and I believe those efforts uh, contribute a lot to the mutual understandings between the two sides. And, and how can uh, China and African countries, though, improve cultural people-to-people -people exchanges as well as media relations? Okay, uh, you see, you know, media play very important role in the uh, public diplomacy and also national image building. Uh, in recent years, we see China put a lot of effort to improve its uh, national image. But actually, not only China, but also Africa suffer from the negative, you know, image uh, created by Western media. Uh, I think, uh, you know, um, China is uh, doing its job to brand or rebrand itself, but I think African countries can do the same. So I would suggest that African countries can collaborate closely with Chinese international media uh, to tell, you know, the China-Africa cooperation story and an um, alternative African stories to the world. All right, uh, Yang Chin Chang joining us there uh, from China. Thank you.